How it's made. Helicopters. The helicopter is classified as a rotor craft. It uses rotors to provide the thrust and lift required for flight. The unique feature of this helicopter is that it can take off and land vertically. It can also hover, fly forward, backward, and sideways. The idea of vertical flight has existed since 400 BC when Chinese toys made of bamboo imitated the flight of modern helicopters. In the 1480s, Leonardo da Vinci designed a machine on paper that he thought could fly vertically. The first combat helicopter, named Fock Wolf FW61, was built in 1936. The first helicopter to go into full production was a helicopter designed by Igor Sigorsky in 1942. Nowadays, helicopters are used for transportation, military, entertainment, and firefighting, as well as rescue and medical emergency transportation. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, How It's Made. Before jumping into the video, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload a new video. That said, let's begin. An overview of helicopter. French engineer Paul Cornu designed and built a helicopter which was successfully launched in 1907, officially making it the world's first manned helicopter. Its characteristic is that the two rotor blades rotate in opposite directions, which cancels out the torque. It's powered by a 24 horsepower engine, which must be fixed in place by people on the ground and cannot be manipulated at all, so all in all it did not achieve great success. Another French engineer, Etienne Oemission, designed a helicopter with a vertically installed rotor that rotates in the opposite direction to that of the large fitting rotor. Later, he also developed the tail rotor. His first helicopter success was in November 1922. Oemission number 2 made history because it was successfully used to transport people. In April of the following year, OA mission flew 360 meters and 525 meters, setting records. In May 1924, a closed-circuit helicopter flew about 1 kilometer in 7 minutes and 40 seconds. In the same year, he flew a helicopter with two passengers. Although OA mission's helicopter design was quite successful, the Focke Wolf FW61 is generally considered the world's first truly practical helicopter. It first flew in 1936 and was designed and developed by two Germans, Henrik Fock and pilot Gerd Achelis. The frame of the aircraft is based on another Focke Wolf FW44 co-designed by Focke, which utilizes licensed rotor technology and relies on radial engines to drive twin rotors. A breakthrough is the reverse rotation of the rotor because this solves the problem of torque reaction. It also has a small horizontal axis propeller driven by the engine, which cools the engine when the helicopter is hovering or flying at low speeds. The second prototype was built in 1937, and the final aircraft went one step further, successfully performing an auto-rotation landing without having to turn on the engine. The Making of an Airplane Selection of Material and Costing Weight reduction is a key consideration in the selection of helicopter materials. Composite materials are widely used and account for a high percentage of the total weight of helicopters, especially in military helicopters. But for some parts, metal materials are still engineers' first choice. In key issues such as cost and reliability, metal has an absolute advantage. Helicopter manufacturers have long recognized the benefits of applying composite materials to important aircraft components. In today's military rotorcraft, composite materials usually account for 50 to 80 percent, or even higher, of the fuselage weight. However, helicopters manufactured for the civil aviation field differ greatly in the application of composite materials. Some manufacturers vigorously learn from their experience in military rotorcraft and use a large number of composite materials. Other manufacturers only use composite materials for specialized or non-structural components or only use composite materials when the use of metal becomes infeasible or costly. The differences can be partly attributed to difference in experience and manufacturing concepts. However, some manufacturers are reluctant to expand the application of composite materials in rotorcraft because the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, recently revised the certification rules, which require more and more stringent composite materials, resulting in costs are rising, and R&D budgets for commercial applications are relatively limited, causing an excessive burden. The History of Rotor Blades In early aircraft manufacturing, the wings were made of wood and fabric. Under the technical conditions at the time, these materials have been serving in the aviation industry for many years. When the first batch of helicopter rotor blades was manufactured, engineers used aircraft technology for reference, so the construction of the first batch of rotor blades was similar to that of an aeroplane wing. Early rotor blades had the main spar, multiple ribs, and fabric skin. The blade is symmetrical because this shape can provide a good lift-to-drag ratio and stable center of pressure, and it's easy to manufacture. This design and shape of rotor blades have continued to be used for many years. Early paddles used a mixture of multiple planks of wood, each with its characteristic. Wood is a very good blade material because it has no known fatigue life. 
the spars of the first helicopter rotor blades were quite strong. The wood used included North American spruce, birch vertical laminates with good impact resistance, and tall balsa wood that could maintain the shape of the blades. The blades are covered with fiberglass and sealed with aircraft paint, similar to the wings of an aircraft. Due to the poor corrosion resistance of glass fiber and wood, a metal leading edge anti-wear wrap is attached to the blade. This idea of a multi-material solution or composite structure is still in use today. Making wooden blades requires patience and excellent carpentry skills. All processes are handmade using templates and a matching set of what is destined to fly in pairs forever from the moment it enters the manufacturing process. The first batch of helicopter. The first batch of helicopter's wooden rotor blades used waterproof resource and all wood glue that was mixed with powder and syrup and cured at room temperature. The leading edge of the stainless steel wing anti-wear wrap strip needs to be thermally bonded to achieve maximum strength. However, the heat of bonding can damage the finished aircraft rear body. The problem is solved by a method called composite bonding. First, make the front edge wear resistant wrap strips into lay strips and cut them into long strips. Then a layer of mahogany veneer is glued to the inside of the anti-wear strip under high heat and high pressure far exceeding the allowable blade. Finally, the anti-wear strips are trimmed according to the shape of the blade so that the wood can be bonded to the wood with waterproof resource and all wood glue at room temperature. There were some problems with wooden blades in the early days. Even if these blades are called infinite life blades, they may be damaged beyond repair. The blades always fly in pairs, so if one blade is scrapped, it means that the other blade is dead. Because wood is easy to damage and absorbs water, people began to use metal blades. In this way, the user can replace only one blade without replacing a complete set of blades. However, the metal blade has a design life and must be replaced after a certain number of flight hours. Once the important position of the metal blade is damaged or broken, a major problem may occur. This may lead to a catastrophic failure with almost no warning. The introduction of the honeycomb internal structure allows designers to incorporate more ideal shapes into the rotor blades, thereby improving its performance. The combination of metal skin and honeycomb structure greatly increases the strength of the beam. Metal blades were an improvement, but the available process methods at the time greatly limited the pace of design. When the first glass fiber skins and foam core or Nomex honeycomb core non-metal blades appeared, it brought unprecedented changes, namely non-catastrophic failure modes. This is ideal in a single load path structure. The old metal blades will crack in the chipped or damaged areas and some cases will suddenly fail, while the new blades will give adequate warnings when there's a problem. The metal skin is a bit like aluminum foil and is easy to tear. When a crack appears and cannot be stopped, the crack will quickly expand, which may cause blade failure. If you use glass fiber skin, each cross fabric will prevent the crack from extending, just like the resistance you receive when trying to tear the shirt fabric. The result of a non-catastrophic failure mode is a clear indication of damage or a warning to the pilot in the form of progressive vertical vibration. Now, the blades can be manufactured into complex shapes, molded and curved in custom molds. Asymmetrical shapes have become common, and sweeping the blade tip helps reduce the Mach number at the blade tip. The British Experimental Rotor Program (BURP) introduced the main rotor blade with both the leading and trailing edges swept. This enabled a Westland Lynx helicopter to create 249 miles per hour in August 1986. Hours of absolute helicopter speed record. This blade design solves the problem of the compressibility of the forward blade tip and at the same time reduces the stall of the backward blade. The trailing blade stall has always been a factor limiting the maximum speed of the helicopter. As the speed of the helicopter increases, the lift of the forward blade increases and the lift of the backward blade decreases. All helicopters have an upper speed limit that can be reached at a certain weight. During forward flight, the trailing blades cannot support one side of the paddle disc, which will cause the trailing blades to stall. Unless corrective measures are taken, the helicopter will roll in the direction of the trailing blades, usually violently ascending, which will greatly increase the pilot's sense of urgency and strongly encourage him to slow down the aircraft. If this happens, the best corrective action is to lower the overall pitch control lever, reduce blade angle and power, reduce air speed, and maximize rotor speed. Pushing the joystick forward or making any anti-torque input will increase the difficulty of correction. The blade shape of burp greatly improves performance at the expense of a little weight. Let us know about the video in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next one.